Hello friends, this video on conservation of plants and animals part 12 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now let us quickly look at some of the ex situ conservation approaches where they are followed. So one such example is the botanical garden as I mentioned before also. This garden has collection of living plants. So the plants are taken out from different areas and then this area is artificially made suitable for the survival of all these plants and then all such plants are kept in the same place. So this can also be an important resource for educational purposes so they can act as a reference to one of there are many botanical gardens in uh, India so one such example is the Uti botanical garden which you see in the picture so they are basically big gardens where you have many different varieties of plants so you would if you have ever visited a botanical garden you would have seen that every plant will have a tag which will tell which plant it is its scientific name and other details so enough care is taken so that all the plants can survive well in this garden. Next is a zoological park which is often termed as zoo. So this is uh, a place of entertainment where people often visit to uh, spend good quality time. Here wild animals are kept in protected environments under human care. So here these animals are kept in protected environments but proper care is given to the animals. However, the animals are captivated. So it is not that they are free to move around here and there. So they are captivated. Mostly you would have seen if you had have visited a zoo, you will see that the animals are present inside cages so, so that they cannot come out of it. So they are captivated but at the same time they are taken care very properly. Uh, proper food is given on time, the environment is made suitable for their existence but then again this is not their natural habitat. So this is how zoological park conservation works. So with this we have reached towards the end of this lesson so let us quickly have a look at some of the questions. Question number one, fill in the blanks. A place where animals are protected in their natural habitat. So whenever you protect an animal in their natural habitat, it is going to be a wildlife sanctuary. So these are sanctuaries. Species found only in a particular area is known as those species which are unique to a particular location. They are called endemic species. For example, the flying squirrel and the giant squirrel of the Panchmari National Park. Migratory birds fly to far away places because of... Now, what are these migratory birds? Now, birds which change their uh, shelter as the environment conditions changes. Now, sometimes in some regions, the climate changes seasonally. So these birds they will fly away from that location and they'll move to a new location where there is favorable climatic condition. So their main cause of migration that is movement from one place to another is climatic changes. Question number two. Differentiate between the following. Wildlife sanctuary and biosphere reserve. So wildlife sanctuary is comparatively smaller, biosphere reserve is larger. It is so large that it can include a couple of wildlife sanctuaries within it. Wildlife sanctuary primarily protect animals in their natural habitat and in this case human interference is not allowed like hunting, poaching. In fact human entry and disturbing the animals is also not allowed. Human beings are only allowed to enter as visitors and they can just look at the animals present inside the sanctuary. But in biosphere reserve, they not only protect animals but also plants and human settlements. Like there are many tribal areas also which are present within the periphery of biosphere reserve. So human settlement, they have access to the animals which live within the biosphere reserve. Flora and fauna. So flora is for the plant species which are present in a particular area and fauna is the corresponding term for the animal species. Flora, they prepare their own food as because green plants are capable of performing photosynthesis. But fauna, they are animals and they depend on flora, that is the plants, either directly or indirectly. Zoo and wildlife sanctuary. 
So if you talk about zoo, here XC2 conservation technique is followed. That is animals are not in their natural habitat. So they live in captivity inside cages. But in wildlife sanctuary, they live freely in their natural habitat. So this is natural habitat, but this is not natural habitat. It is artificially created habitat. So when you want lions to be present inside a zoo, so you have to create an atmosphere in, uh, surrounding the lion that it is its habitat so that it is able to survive there. Zoo might breed or trade animals. Animals also get traded in a zoo. For example, you would have seen many circus companies and all. So they uh, show you many uh, performances using animals like elephants, lions and tigers. So many times they take these kind of animals from zoo. So in zoo, these kind of trade happens. In fact, forcefully breeding animals also take place so that smaller animals are born and they can be used to entertain kids who are coming to the zoo. So that means forceful breeding or trading of animals happen in zoo, but nothing like this happens in a wildlife sanctuary. Because wildlife sanctuary is like a natural place for animals. So nobody can bother or disturb them. Endangered species and extinct species. So endangered species are those species whose numbers are decreasing but they are still there. But extinct species their number have decreased to zero so they do not exist anymore. So example of extinct species are dinosaurs and endangered species may be a Bengal tiger which, is, which still exists but they are very less in number. So they might become extinct any day. Question number three. Discuss the effects of deforestation on the following. So what, it, so what is deforestation? It is nothing but cutting down of forests on a large scale. So what will happen? What will be the result of deforestation on wild animals? Now if you clear cut, clear down the entire forest, so the animals will lose their habitat. So loss of habitat is one consequence and lack of food. So the animals will not be able to get their food. So these will be the consequences on wild animals. Environment. Now when a large number of plants are being cut down, so there is nobody to take in carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Therefore the carbon dioxide will increase in the atmosphere. So this will result in global warming because carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas that is it absorbs infrared radiation. So that means it will increase the average temperature of the earth, it will cause global warming, it will also disturb the food chain because when plants are being cut down there are so many other animals which are directly or indirectly dependent on plants for their food. So the entire food chain will get disturbed. Villages, what kind of effect will it have on the villages? So here they will have high probability of floods as I have mentioned before also because in due to the presence of plants they hold the soil tightly and prevent it from being carried away by uh, rainfall. And also the water retaining capacity of the soil is more when there are more plants. Now when all the plants are being cut down, the water holding capacity of the soil reduces. Therefore, whenever there is rainfall, it all remains on the surface and that's how it leads to flood. Crop productivity is adversely affected because soil erosion takes place. That is, soil gets easily carried away by water. So, since the soil quality is not good, soil fertility is not there. So, the crop productivity is also not good. Its effects on cities. Now, since in villages, agriculture will get adversely affected. So, therefore, there will be no proper food supply to the cities. So, the food supply will get affected because end of the day, grains, vegetables, everything come from agriculture. It will also cause environmental pollution due to increased level of carbon dioxide. On the earth as a whole, it will cause global warming again due to increased level of carbon dioxide, increased greenhouse gas because carbon dioxide is a very significant greenhouse gas. It will also disturb the entire ecosystem that is dependency of uh, different living organisms on each other. So that will get disturbed. How will it affect the next generation? 
So if we cut down all the trees, so what will be left for the next generations? Because in the next couple of years, the environment will get completely polluted due to increased level of carbon dioxide. The temperature of the earth will also increase due to global warming and survival of life would become more challenging. Because as the environment becomes less suitable, so survival of living organisms will become more difficult. So this is how deforestation is going to have harmful effects on various things. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.